Welcome to our classic car now. The plan for today is to have a look at the gearbox oil in the Ford Anglia. I did check the level a little while back, but I'm not entirely sure that it's got the right grade of oil in it. So the only way to be sure is to drop out the oil that's in there and replace it with some fresh. It won't harm anyway. So I've dug out the workshop manual. And if we go and find the gearbox section, which is 70 something, here we go. It'll give us all the capacities for the gearbox itself. Here we go. Specifications, repair data and wear limits. This is for all the, the Ford 8s and 10s, the Ford Anglia, the Prefect, the 5 and the 10 hundred weight vans, the Pop, etc. So, right, here we go. And according to this, the oil capacity is one Imperial pint, which is just over half a litre. Now it says extreme pressure gear oil, SAE 90, because I know in some old gearboxes they don't like having EP 90 um, due to some of the additives that are in there. The yellow metal parts within the gearbox um, don't approve of EP rated oils. So I don't know what's in there, so I'm going to make sure that it has SAE 90, the straight 90 gear oil, and then at least I know that it's the right stuff that's in there. So I've got some oil on the shelf, so that's all good. So I think the next thing to do is jack the car up, just so I can get underneath properly, drain out the oil that's in there. Like I say, it's only just over half a litre, so it's not much at all. And then have a look at filling it up again, which you do via the inside of the car. Um, right, let's go and find the jack. Well, that's the jack and the stand's dug out, so I'm going to jack it up to drain it. Once it's drained, I'll drop it back on the floor so that the car's level for refilling, which you do from inside the car. Right. Get these sorted out there. Okay, well that's not going anywhere. I'll leave the jack under there just for a little extra support. But it's now on the stands anyway, so that's all good. While it's up here, I'll have a look at the kingpins and so on. Now well, has the drain plug. It's just over there. Quick look underneath, pretty good, just spread a little bit more oil around sometime, but it's looking fairly oily for the most part, that's all good. Pretty dry up at the front, right, so we've got a container, so let's drain off whatever's in there, and then we can look at putting fresh in. I always like to have fresh oil in things, and I know exactly where things are at. Looks like it's been in there a little while, I don't know. Well, I'm advised that the front gate needs oiling squeaky hinges, so while the gearbox is draining, let's go and attend to the gates. Well, that's the gates done, so let's have a quick look at the gearbox oil. It should have finished draining out by now, surely. Ouch. Yeah, I think that'll do, so I'll uh, clean up the drain plug, pop that back in, and it can come back off the jacks, and I can retire to the inside and look at topping it back up again. Well, this is what came out. Now, I'm not quite sure what age it is. It may not be that old, but like I say, I don't know what grade it is, so it's not like half a litre of gearbox oil that's going to break the bank. This can go in one of the oil cans and be reused for light duties, like oiling the gate hinges, which I've just done. So, that's all good. 
I'm going to find somewhere safe to put that so I don't stand in it. And then uh, let's have a look inside and access the gearbox filler plug. But before I do that, it has to come down off the stands. Well, I've rolled it outside now because that makes it an awful lot easier to swing the door open and ferret around in here with the door nice and wide. So let's take this mat out. I have to carefully lift up these original mats. I say carefully because you don't want to damage them. Because after however many years it is, they're not going to be as flexible as they were when they were new. I'm going to do this one handed, so uh, I'll be back in the mo. Well, there are two ways to fill up the gearbox on a Ford Anglia or Pop 103E, any of these little side valve Fords. You can either fill up through the dipstick hole, which is there, or you can take the gear lever off, which isn't a big deal, it's underneath this rubber thing. But as we're not in a great rush, I'll go and find a funnel and I think I'll fill it up through here. Okay, looks like we're getting there. Just keep filling her up slowly a bit at a time until we get up to the mark. Oh, well that's that then, it's all up to the mark and the dipstick is back in. So all that remains to do is take it for a quick test drive and make sure everything's hunky-dory. Okay, well, classic car quiz time. Can anyone help me? This badge I found a little while ago but I don't know what it's off. If I go outside, just get a bit of a better look. Now, at first, I thought it may be Vauxhall 14, the DX of the sort of mid to late 1930s. It's obviously been glued on something at some point, but I'm not so sure now. So, does anyone recognise what it is? It's not... I don't think it's Rover. I don't think it's a Rover P2 or the P1. My best guess at the moment, but I've not found a match yet, is Hillman. Is this off a Hillman 14? I know there's a lot of classic and vintage car people out there who know their onions. So I'm just wondering if anyone can tell me what this particular badge is for. Uh, that'd be quite handy, please. Only because it'd be nice to know what it used to, uh, what car it used to grace. So, yeah, if you can uh, drop me a note in the comments if you know exactly what this is for, please, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks. do a proper video but I have actually cleared out some of the clutter from the Little Morris now. Um, there seems to be quite a lot of interest in this tiny 1932 Morris Minor, the £100 car as Morris marketed it as. So uh, I think in a day or so I'll wheel it outside, I might have to move the tractor, wheel it outside and have a proper look round and just see exactly what she needs. If you've not seen a video that I did upload the other day you'll find it on the main channel homepage. And if you like pre-war cars, please uh, let me know. Right, let's go and get this uh, Anglia sorted out and take it for a spin. Make sure that that gearbox and the gearbox oil are doing what they should. As we're out for a spin, let's see what the original Anglia handbook for about 1947-48 has to say about your new Anglia. So a quick look, see what pearls of wisdom Ford's had to say. Although your Anglia has been designed and built to provide you with an economical and reliable means of transport for many thousands of miles, no amount of engineering ingenuity or care in manufacture can take the place of reasonable attention and avoidance of misuse by the driver. It is as important to be thoroughly familiar with the points requiring periodical attention as to know how to drive. These points are completely covered on pages 17 to 27 and it is most important to see that they are not neglected. When these services are required, it is recommended that you consult an authorised Ford dealer. A little time and labour spent in maintaining your car will undoubtedly save you considerable trouble and expense, which could be quite easily avoided. The following suggestions are offered to assist you in the operation of your car. Do not drive the car with your foot resting on the clutch pedal. 
This may cause a clutch to slip, resulting in premature wear of the facings and release bearing. In any case, it should be adjusted if the free travel exceeds three quarters of an inch. When you change gear, make sure the gear change lever goes right home. This will reduce wear of the gears to a minimum and prevent possible jumping out of gear. Do not race the engine when it is cold, as this is liable to cause undue wearing of the moving parts. The oil requires a minute or so to warm up before flowing freely to the bearings. Never run the engine with the carburetor starting device in action after it has warmed up, as this will cause overheating, bore wear and excessive fuel consumption. Maintain the correct pressure in the tyres, not only to reduce tyre wear, but as a safety measure to improve braking and steering. The care of the battery is of utmost importance. Check the crankcase oil level daily, especially when high speeds are maintained. If the oil becomes diluted with either petrol or water, its lubricating value is destroyed, and it should be replaced with new oil, irrespective of the mileage for which it has been used. The use of inferior oils and neglect to change the oil at regular intervals is distinctly false economy. Use the door and ignition locks which are provided for your protection. A careful note should be made of the numbers stamped on the keys in order that they may be replaced should the originals be lost. Neglect of the body or the mechanical parts of the car will shorten their life and accelerate the rate of depreciation. Periodic chassis lubrication is far less costly than the premature wear of the mechanical parts resulting from neglect. To obtain the best result, a new car should not be driven for the first 500 miles in excess of the following speeds. Top gear, 30 miles per hour. Second gear, 17 miles per hour. First gear, 10 miles per hour. Afterwards, the maximum speed in each gear may be worked up by degrees, and short bursts of speed employed before driving continuously at a fast rate. And those were the owner's responsibilities for the buyer of the Ford Anglia E494A. Right, let's carry on this little journey. Right, well, that little test drive seems to have demonstrated that the gearbox and the gearbox oil in the Ford Anglia seem to be behaving themselves. Uh, I think we'll probably call it a day now, so I'm going to head back to base and go and have a cup of tea. So, thanks very much for watching. Please check out some of the other videos on the channel, which some of which look at the Anglia, others look at other cars, collection of photographs and so on. Hope that was of interest. More videos very soon.